Good morning. Um, so we've had talks on rural, we've had talks on urban, and I'm going to take you for a little trip down the Red Deer River watershed. And I do a lot of education work with students as well as the public, general public. And uh, this presentation is multifaceted. I can add information to it as I go along. I can switch out slides. I try to keep a really good photo um, essay uh, archive in our in our so that I can switch out photos. So if I'm going out to talk about bridges and pipeline crossings, I can switch in photos. Um, and so it's a working doc document that can be used multifaceted. So this is the Red Deer River watershed. We start up in the Skokie Valley in Banff National Park. Um, and we go all the way north up to, by Winfield, uh, by Pigeon Lake. Um, you can see where the glaciers uh, blipped down a little bit and formed uh, the perimeter for other watersheds. Um, so places by Red Deer where it blips down there, we've got Lacombe and Pinoka who get their drinking water from Red Deer, but they put their wastewater into the Battle River. So, and then if we go down by Brooks, we have our Eastern Irrigation District where we're taking water from the Bow River and then putting it into the Red Deer. So our watershed probably has um, two of the biggest um, crossovers of water from two different watersheds in it. So this, um, so my role of the outreach department is to educate people on water quality, quantity, and environmental health, and promoting the stewardship within the basin. And that can be youth stewardship as well as um, adult stewardship. So the basic definition that students learn in school for a watershed is a watershed is an area of land that catches rain or snow and drains to a common point. And that's in our curriculum as the textbook definition. But we want to make that broader. We want the students um, to understand what else it includes. So it's more than just water. So in our Red Deer River watershed, we have 49,650 kilometers squared of land. We have farms. We have 15 sub-watersheds within our area. The main river stem is 724 kilometers long. We have urban areas, recreational areas. We have uh, Sylvan Lake, Gull Lake, and Buffalo Lake within our area. Um, we have wilderness, especially out towards the Rockies, surface water, groundwater, and of course traditional lands. We do not have any um, set reserves in our area but we do have traditional lands from two trees. A watershed is more than just the land and the water in an area, it is in the impacts. So we take into fact the sustainable triangle of ecological, socio, and economical. And so then we look at the Canadian drainage basin. So at the bottom of our watershed, we do have that, the beginning of that endoheric um, area in uh, the southeast portion of Alberta. Um, so our northern water in Alberta drains into the Arctic. Um, our water from the Red Deer drains into the Hudson Bay. So it flows out into the confluence with the south. Saskatchewan then carries up um, diagonally across Saskatchewan where it meets up at the north. And then from there it goes into the Craig Lake at the top of Lake Winnipeg, then into Lake Winnipeg, and it, then it makes its slow journey up to towards York Factory and out into the Hudson Bay. So we impact a huge area of land, not just that area of land within our small subwater subwatershed. So this is um, the breakup of the 15 subwatersheds. Um, all based on tributaries that flow in or have an impact on our river. So the Panther sub-watershed, um, those are the headwaters of up in Skokie Valley. Our first dam along the um, river is the Klein Lake Dam. Um, 
the most of the panther area is national park and it is where the big national park ranch is where they um, have their horses yaha tinda and bighorn falls is one of the big waterfalls along the area so a lot of water, water recharge into the river here. This is where our greatest amount of water comes into the main stem. Then we go into the James sub-watershed. We're starting to see small urban settlements. Um, we are starting to see some uh, recreational areas in the form of uh, ATV use and off-road vehicle impact is quite large in this area. Um, we have a lot of forestry in this area, and we um, also have what, recreations in Burnstick Lake. The Raven Sub Watershed has a northern arm and, and then the, uh, the main arm of it. Uh, the spring on the Lofit Farm up at, in the North Raven is uh, the headwaters for that portion. And there has been a lot of work on this um, sub-watershed on riparian um, repair, as you can see down below on Stouffer Creek. That was a big project. Medicine River, uh, it's one of our most impacted along. We start to see lots of farming um, cattle production along this area, and it goes through Eckville, um, and feeds uh, into the river. Uh, it's confluence. It flows all the way up to like around Gilby in by Rimby. The Little Red Deer um, flows from around the Water Valley area. So we come in from both northern and southern um, into the main stream. This is down by Water Valley with the horses that surround the Anderson Ranch. And uh, then we have the Blind Man sub-watershed. This is our second impacted area. Um, this area, we see a lot of erosion along the riverbanks in this area and a lot of slumping. Uh, you see a lot of peak flow through this area and it's in those curves in the river because it is a very meandering, curvy um, river. It ends up having a lot of slump along the edges where we see the big bends in the river. Waska Sioux starts up by the Innis Innisville and it flows through Red Deer. Um, Slack Slough is part of the Waska Sioux area as well. Um, it's a big migratory bird sanctuary. And then, of course, we have the outflow of the Waska Sioux into the main river. The Buffalo sub-watershed this area is the knob and kettle area um, of, in the province, and so it had a lot of wetland loss back in the early 70s in this area, so wetland loss impact is quite large up in this area. Um, it was a big range area for the buffalo. Uh, big buffalo kills took place up in this area, and the Red River carts came through from Manitoba and picked up the furs, went back to the top of Lake Winnipeg, and then the furs were carried up, up to uh, York Factory. So um, this at one time, it was a big uh, Métis settlement area. Um, Content Bridge has now been gifted back to the Métis, but there is not a true settlement there. It's a campground and a rec an RV park basically. Three Hills sub-watershed, we're starting to get down into that deeper river valley. We're starting to see the formation of hoodoos where we have soft, soft rock as well as hard rock, so the soft walk, rock is worn away by water erosion and it leaves the hard rock, so we get those hoodoo formations. Um, this area, Dry Island Buffalo Jump um, Park, Provincial Park is in this area. Knee Hill Sub Watershed, um, starting to get down closer to the Drumheller area. It's a really deep um, river valley with your farms on the top of the 
place. Machichi is more in Hannah area. They have a large reservoir on the Machichi um, River. And then on the main stem, we start to see less water going into the river at this point. So our flow rate is slowing down. We're, the water um, is moving slower. This is a really big area for canoers and kayakers. And we start to see, because we have a lot of um, floaters in the summer months, we start to see high pollution buildups on the on those shorelines in this area where um, people, beer cans and those types of things. Rosebud subwatershed um, down around the Rosebud area, but it starts up in the Didsbury area. And it's, there's been quite a bit of work done through the Wheatland County on riparian repair in this, on this river. The Barry sub-watershed were further down in the province and the cliffs were in where the inland sea was at, so we can do a lot of climactic history through the cliffs in this area um, just by looking at the rock layering and the layers in, this, in, in the cliffs. And then, I've, I mispronounce this all the time, Matt Switchen, I think it is, but if I'm wrong, you can correct me. Um, we're getting down. We're really slow, meandering river at this point. High cliff. Um, our trees we only find down in that those deep valleys. The rest of it is mostly sage and and that type of growth. We start to see rattlesnakes more prevalent in this area. And then we come to the alkali um, as the name indicates this is where we start to see salt pen um, wetlands and we um, this is the confluence with the South Saskatchewan just over the border of Alberta in the Empress area. So that's our that it, that those are the five 15 watershed sub watersheds. So then we look at the urban impacts um, with students and so we talk about waste treatment plants. If we're talking to rural um, students, most of them have never seen what a waste treatment plant looks like. They're used to um, septic fields and wells. So waste treatment plants with the secondary bubblers on it. Uh, water treatment plants uh, providing the safe drinking water. And impervious surfaces. So we talk about urban area and groundwater recharge, how there's very little groundwater recharge in an urban area when it has this amount of impervious surface. Most of our water becomes storm water and drains off straight into the main stem. So then we have our girl guides out doing the Yellowfish Road project, which the city of Red Deer um, works on. Rural impacts, septic fields, um, making urban students understand what a septic field is, um, how they can collapse, um, how they function, how, what, it, what are the impacts towards groundwater rather than surface water. Shoreline alterations, um, we like our cottages in Alberta. We like to be able to see out of our living room straight down to the water's edge, so we see a lot of um, shoreline alterations, which then has an impact on our lakes and shores. Wells, um, we have uh, contamination down through the wells, uh, wells that are left decommissioned, and then water license diversions. Uh, this, we see more of this down in the southeastern portion of the watershed. And forest fires and other fires. So, of course, we um, out towards highway, highway 12 and out towards the Rocky Mountains, we do see um, where they do controlled burns every once in a while. This does have an impact on our on the main main stem of the river. You get uh, erosion runoff, um, but then you also have an impact of the use of water for fighting fires. Agricultural, manure spreading, 
um, proper times to uh, spread manure. Most uh, urban students don't think about um, even spreading manure, but then understanding that um, the impact on the river if you spread it at the wrong time. Fertilizer and pesticides um, spreading, talking about nitrogen and phosphorus. Wetland loss, um, looking at it from both sides. Um, as a farmer, you if you if you cultivate and work your fields in straight lines, you use less gas. Um, so of course the farmer doesn't want to have to go completely around the wetland, so filling them in makes his job and his cost less. And so what, what impact does that have on the farm? What impact does it have on the land? And making them understand what a healthy wetland is. Livestock, um, of course, cattle going straight into the river. Um, and the breakdown of the plants that help to stop erosion. Irrigation, um, changes in irrigation practices, and then structure location. Does it make a difference where a farmer builds his, his um, barn? Um, does the location of a structures along a river in a floodplain have an effect on the river? Industrial impacts, hydroelectric or flow control dams, um, the Dixon Dam is a flow control, so it controls the flow for the river. Smaller weirs and dikes, we have numerous ones along the river. Gravel pits, mining shaft and pits, commercial use, and a lot of times the students don't realize that um, we don't sell bulk water. It's illegal to sell bulk water, but, but Coke and Pepsi can bottle water and then they can sell it. And then a lot of our water does go over the border into the states as bottled product. Same as in big water plants in Las Vegas and they send their water to Japan. Yet there's a shortage of water in the Vegas area. So, <laughs> And then forestry. So the difference between cut forestry uh, and um, the types of forestry practices that are happening more today. Pipeline crossings, um, impacts that those have, the difference between pipeline um, that was buried 50 years ago and a pipeline that is buried in a pipeline crossing today. Um, different, different measurements. Um, most of the pipelines that were put in 15 years ago may have only been put in 18 inches down and now there is a deeper um, requirement. Ferry crossings, uh, this is down on um, Lurat um, and it's still an active ferry crossing today and all the roadways. So linear development is a huge impact on our um, watersheds. Cut lines, electric, hydroelectric cut lines, this increases erosion because of the lack of of stable um, root systems. Pipelines and underground utility lines of all types, not just oil and gas. And bridges, roads, so bridges for roads, rails, and pedestrian crossings, and trails and pathways. And we see this more in our western part of our watershed where there's a lot of active recreational off-road vehicle use. Oil and gas impacts, fracking, um, oil spills, tailing ponds, pump jacks, vertical rigging, and pit extraction. How those impact the watershed, um, the difference between a fracking rig and a vertical rig, um, best management practices around a pump jack. They now push the topsoil back and build a berm around them as a best management practice, and how, how that acts as a best management practice, um, allowing the native soil to stay there. It also keeps the seed that it, from the native plants there, so they re reclaim that area. It actually helps in the reclaiming of that area. And that pit extraction is the coal pit um, east of Red Deer. Uh, fishers, 
ice fishing have a big impact on our watershed. Uh, campgrounds and RV parks, we're seeing bigger um, um, numbers of these in our, in our watershed. Self-propelled watercraft, this is in Red Deer at Bower Ponds. Um, motorized watercraft, um, with money comes bigger boats, faster boats. Marinas and ATV and ORV um, use are the biggest recreational impacts in our area. So that is um, the presentation that I will take out um, to uh, grade 8 students who are doing working on fresh water systems. I will also vary things up for use um, on public loops out at events. So that is the Do You Know Your Watershed presentation and that is the Red Deer River Watershed.